Okay, uh, now that we have a skateboard model that has been um, textured, we have created textures and applied them, uh, that has been rigged for animation, uh, that has a skin modifier applied, and we've adjusted the skin modifier, uh, fixed some artifacting and, and strange deformations that happen as a result of uh, the natural process. Um, it's time to animate our character. Okay, so we're going to do that next. But first, before we do that, actually before we do that, I want to go through a couple of things here. Um, first of all, let's talk about animation really quickly. There's a, you know, a variety of ways to animate things in, in, in a 3D animation application like 3ds Max. Um, one is called freeform animation. And freeform animation is extremely complicated. Uh, requires a lot of experience and knowledge and understanding of movement, uh, of how things move, how people move, how animals move, or whatever it is you're working with. You have to really understand and timing uh, and dealing with the timing of things and understanding how long it takes. Most people think things take longer than they do until you see it play back and it's like in walking through cement or something. Um, so the other way, or one of the other ways and the way that we're going to be doing it is using motion capture files. Now, you may have heard of motion capture files. Movies use motion capture files a lot now uh, for any kind of animation they may have in it of characters or whatever. And it means that motion has been captured from an actor that's, that's gone through the motion and then that motion data was, was captured uh, digitally and can be applied to a 3D model. And that's what we're going to be doing. What I've done is I've taken three existing motion capture files from a library that I have of motion capture stuff and um, and put them together. They're skateboarder uh, animations, uh, but they're very short and there's kind of specific. There's a trick. There's a, you know a couple of things that go on. I want to uh, I wanted to put them all together to make a longer, more interesting animation. It's only it's not real long. It's only about seven seconds, but it's still plenty, and you really get a sense of kind of how this is going to go. All right. So enough about that part. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that some things are linked. Uh, to our, to our, uh, I'm, I'm going to be saying biped a lot because I've been using biped for 15 years and, and now we're using this character animation toolkit, which I love by the way. It's got a lot of features that, that, are, that are really great. Um, anyway, the, uh, uh, we need to link certain things that aren't part, actually part of our character. The first thing I need to do is I need to uh, unfreeze all so I can select my character model. And by the way, I want to point out that uh, the cat rig all, I have the whole cat rig set up here as a selection set, makes it really handy if I want to hide it. So I just say hide selection, you know, by just simply, and really easy to select the whole thing, uh, regardless of whether my, my character is frozen or not. I want to make sure that my character model see through is turned off so you can see the, the textures. Uh, and you notice he has no eyes, the hair is not there, and I have a cap for you that you know will uh, finish his ensemble of uh, clothing items here that makes him look kind of cool. And I also have a skateboard uh, that I'm, we're going to import and just a little bit or merge into it. Uh, but right now we're going to go ahead and, and make sure that the eyes and the hair are showing because they actually exist in this 3ds Max file. So let's go here and unhide by name. And I'm going to unhide both the uh, eyes. Um, and the uh, and the hair, and there we go. That looks a little bit more natural. It's not so creepy without the eyes. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to merge from another 3ds Max file that I made for you of a hat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to import, and then in this list merge. Not you're not going to actually import it. You're going to merge it in because it's an actual part of a 3ds Max file. Or actually, it's the only thing in the 3ds Max file. So I need to go to my skateboarder production folder, okay? And you'll see that there is a skateboarder hat 3ds Max file. Select that and say open. And then select the hat and say okay. And there he is. So there's the hat. And just, just in case you were wondering, he's a Vikings fan. Okay, purple hat. 
Uh, just be glad that I didn't put a Dallas Cowboys star on the back of the hat with it being blue or silver or whatever. <laughs> I love the Vikings, but I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan since I was 10 years old myself. All right, so anyway, um, back to then a long time ago. All right, so anyway, uh, let's go on and import the skateboard now. Okay, so that's the next thing. So we're going to go and, and merge the skateboard in, rather. So go here, go to import, and then merge. And we're going to get the skateboarder skateboard 3ds max file and open that up choose the skateboard in here you'll notice a little brackets run that means it's a grouped item of uh, several several pieces okay and say okay and there's our skateboard and this skateboard was was created just like i create, created we created the the, uh, the character uh, for the most part uh, the, the wheels are just simply chamfer cylinders that i've manipulated a little bit uh, but otherwise this is this was just a box a skinny box um, and the axles would start off as a box, extruded some things out, reshaped it and everything, and then duplicate it and put it on the back. So that's all there was to that, but I just figured uh, didn't want to overwhelm me with too many things that needed to be made for this uh, this finished scene here uh, and the, and the uh, character. All right, so we got that going. Now, the next thing that we're going to bring in is I made an environment also. So we're going to uh, go ahead and import or merge that environment as well. So let's go ahead and go to merge. So import, merge, and choose skateboarder landscape. All right, select that, open, and choose all three objects in here. I probably should have uh, included the, the lighting. But that's okay, I'm just thinking out loud. All right, so we got all three of those things selected because we want to choose the background, which is the background image. It's like, like the landscape scene in a sense. And then, um, and then a chamfer box, uh, which represents, you'll see. And then there's a camera in there as well that makes it nice. So we'll just say, okay. And there's our environment. So now we have our skateboarder uh, in our environment here, okay, uh, with a skateboard park in the background and this thing that he's going to be skating on. This you know, one of these pieces that he's going to be skating on. So what we need to do here is I need to uh, go into camera view, and just all I have to do is just hit the C key on my keyboard, and now we're in camera view. Now, the skateboard is back over here a little ways, okay, this is fine, which is fine. Uh, but we haven't applied the animation yet, so I'm going to go back to perspective view. I just wanted to show you the, the view from the camera view. It's a little bit more interesting, and it really feels pretty pretty much like this is blending with that, especially when it's rendered with the right with the proper lighting. Right now, I don't have the proper lighting uh, in here, but we won't worry about that just at the moment. We'll fix that a little later. <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to go ahead and um, uh, uh, go into perspective view here. And so I can move over here and rotate around and just kind of take a just go ahead and get my cat rig here and say yes. First thing we want to do before we start animating is we want to make sure that our eyes, hat, and hair. Which are not part of our character here, that so they won't so they won't follow along with this animation. Well, I'll just show you. I'll just show you really quick right now. Let's go ahead and load the animation in, and you're going to see kind of what happens. It's better to show you than to. Uh, so let's go back into camera view here. All right, and whoops. Let me get the. I think I can get the base. What have I got selected? There we go. I can tell it's the base because it has the underscore thing and nothing else. Let's go into our motion panel here. And we're going to load the file that I was talking about, which is a uh, BIP uh, motion capture file. So click there. And if it probably won't say when you do this BIP already, it'll probably say something like that. You want to make sure that if you don't see it in here, it's because you don't have biped selected as the type of file that you're going to be working with. So that's it. And now you can see that it shows up. So select that, open it. And then we're going to go ahead and say, okay, now one of the things I want to point out here, let's go back to the, uh, let's go to the front view here for a second. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. One of the things that is important when we're doing this kind of stuff and we're importing these files is to make sure that the biped height, which is literally what is going to be loaded in here, is going to be a biped that has the animation baked into it. Okay? Baking into it means that it becomes part of it, literally part of it. Um, saved into it. Uh, we're going to be importing this in here by using the specific process of capturing the animation from the biped. 
file. And so it's going to actually put this biped inside of, inside of here. It's going to look very funny at first. But we want to make sure that the height of our character is very close to the same height as the biped. If it's not, uh, then we need to re then we need to type that value in so that the biped's height will be reduced or enlarged or whatever to fit our character. Okay. So let's, there's a really cool tool in here, very simple little tool uh, in the tools menu called measure distance. So choose measure distance from the tools menu. And all you have to do is click in one place, which will start at the bottom of the, of the feed here, and then click in another place, which will be the top of the of the, uh, uh, the rig. And you can look down here, you can see that it's pretty darn close to 82. It's 81.102, which is just fine. It'll be it'll be just, just fine. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. And it should work just great. And there we go. Now, notice, let me smooth our animation. Notice that the, <laughs> that's pretty creepy, doesn't it? it? Looks like some sort of little alien. Uh, disembodied eyes and, and head and hat. Um, uh, anyway, did not go along with our character. And that's the reason why is because the rig is is uh, meant to be part of our character, and it was skinned so that the the character rig and the and the mesh are joined. Okay. Now I want you to notice these strange parts that we have going on. You see them sticking out. But that's the biped that actually came in here along with us. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to hide that or get rid of that. But we're going to simply by capturing the animation. When you click on that button, what it's going to do is it's going to bake the animation from the biped into our bone system, our cat rig, uh, and then get rid of the biped at the same time. So we'll do that. Asks us do we want to rem delete the source hierarchy and remove mapping layer, meaning that we want to get rid of the um, the uh, the BIP file and its layer. And say yes. You notice that that extra layer. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but there was an extra layer over here, and it's gone now. And now we just have our character with this rig, and it's actually he's just skating. So you can imagine he's just not going to move his feet very much because it's on the skateboard, right? So what we're going to also have to do is link the skateboard to our character. Okay. Now what I'm going to do for for right now to make this simple is I'm going to hide my Cat rig all, okay. Select my uh, whoops. I thought I put the. Uh, I guess I didn't. Let's do. Let's do that now. I swore I made that selection set. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So skateboarder. Didn't you think that I made it? Maybe I didn't. Okay. Lost my brain again. Okay. Hit enter to make sure it sticks. But I want to hide this for the time being. So we're going to hide selection, and we're going to deal with this right now. So what I want to do is get. Get these guys linked to this cat rig's head. Okay, that's the that's, that's going to make it follow the uh, the um, the character. And I'm not going to change the position of these. That's very important. You don't move these because then it won't match up with the character. Okay, so I'm going to select the base of my cat rig. I'm going to turn off the animation. Okay, and then I'm going to turn on this link file here and I'm going to uh, first of all let me see I think what I really need to do here is go back here I need to select I need to select the eyes here Oops, hold that wrong button eyes hair and hat all at once I don't think it's gonna let me do that but I'll try and then click on link and then go into here, select by name. You'll notice that instead of it saying um, open or whatever it says down here, I can't remember now, it says link. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be opening up this, go to the spine, I think it's going to be in the spine area. We need to select our head. You know, cancel. Let's do it. The, let's see if we can do it the easy way. Let's cancel out of here. We've got a linked thing here. Let's see if we can link. From these objects to the head, ah, it worked great. You can see because it blinked. Okay, now we're now we're in shape. Now watch what happens. If I ha hide our cat rig here, which you can easily do, I'm gonna go in here and select the cat rig all, and I'm gonna hide it. Hide selection. I'm gonna show our skateboarder. Okay. Oh, I can't hide the cat rig yet. 
I will in a second. I get a, because I have to select the um, oops, get out of the linking tool. I have to select the uh, the base of our rig here uh, and turn on the animation. Okay, now I can hide my cat rig. And you can notice now that the hair and the and the hat are going along. You can't see the eyes, but they're there as well. Select the cat rig, hide the selection, and now everything is going together. And that's exactly what we're after. So that was a fairly simple process, but it may seem, you know, you know if you don't get it right the first time, just undo it and, and, uh, and uh, try it again. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and play this animation. Well, it looks pretty cool. Let's, let's go into camera view here. It looks pretty cool with him air skating, <laughs> literally, and he falls down. Oh, no, I fell down. His hat's going to have to come off if he fell down that hard. Well, maybe not. He kind of landed on his butt. So maybe his hat doesn't have to come off. But that would be something we could do, because it's only linked to the character, and we can unlink it at any time. So he needs a skateboard, okay? So let's go back, and we're going to need to show our cat rig again. There's a few little uh, uh, deformities that you can notice in the shoulder area here, because he's really stretching really hard, that we may need to fix a little bit. So we're going to do that as well, in just a little bit. Yes, we do want to have all those. I'm going to go back to perspective view so I don't mess up my camera positioning. And uh, go over here and go back to the beginning of the animation here. And I'm going to get my selection set for my skateboarder and hide it for the time being. All right, so now what we need to do is link the board to the front part of his left foot. Okay, so let's get into sort of a high view here, sort of a top view. And I'll move this board roughly into position here. I need to see the feet. There we go. Roughly into position. And then I need to rotate it. Move it again, get it in a better position here. Oops, I do. There we go. Kind of get it in there. He's on the balls of his feet. Okay, the skateboard needs to come down a little bit. And as it gets close to the ground here, just right under the foot here. That'll work. And that's pretty close to the actual ground object. From the angle that we're going to be looking at it, I don't think you'll be able to tell any shadows underneath and everything. Uh, sometimes precision is really important. Other times, you know, you can waste your time just really trying to get things perfect. And uh, it, it sometimes never will be. So what we want to do now is we want to link this board to this uh, front part of his left foot. Very simple. Just click on the select and link. And this time, we're, since it's right there in the open, real easy to select, I'm literally just going to select this. I'm going to click and drag from here to there. And there we go. In fact, I should have clicked. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to, I'm going to unlink. OK, try that again. I'm going to click and drag from there to Okay, so let's do this again. So it's like this, link it to there instead. Okay, there we go. That'll make a little bit more sense. Okay. So now, what I want to do now is I want to make sure that I have the skateboard kind of facing in the proper direction for the animation. So I'm going to scrub through the animation, and it looks pretty good. Zoom out just a little bit. Yep, looks pretty good. All right. So I've got them facing the right direction, the skateboard's in the right spot. So that's excellent. Okay, good deal. Okay, so you can see that the animation here is such that, you know, it's not too far off. The only thing that's really kind of wrong here is that part right there. Most of the animation is okay until we get to this part right here where his foot literally goes to the board because he's doing a jump and he's pushing down hard on the back of the skateboard. Now, I don't skateboard, but, you know, I've done plenty of downhill skiing, stuff like that, and I understand the concepts here. Um, I'm too old to skateboard. I hurt myself. Uh, anyway, so what I need to do is, as part of the animation for this, ultimately, and I'm not going to do this right now, uh, we want to make sure that that comes, we, where that skateboard comes way down here, okay? And I think what I'm going to do to make this happen, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to um, see if I don't jack this all up. I'm going to go to the hierarchy, and I'm going to get my move tool here. 
image say effect pivot point and I'm going to move this pivot I want to move this have this on local for our reference coordinate system okay instead of view so view has to do with the viewport but I want the reference coordinate system for that to be there I want to rotate this gizmo so that it's actually facing in the correct direction so that I can actually you know work with it and then I also want to move it to the front of the board or near the front of the board right where his foot is okay that's going to make it rotate a little bit better for the purpose of uh, the animation of the, of the board we want it to rotate uh, on that because it feels like mostly he's using his front foot to get him going and guiding his, his board and so forth okay so along with this balance turn off the effect pivot point now let's go back to uh, let's say the camera view here real quick now let's go to perspective perspective view we need to be able to see this a little better okay so by doing this here I'm going to sort of get it into a position here let's go back to where His foot starts to go down. You can see this actually that the board is going up a little bit already. I did a little animation on the board. I imported the board and imported the animation. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get the select and rotate. I'm going to turn on auto key. And I'm going to set a key really quickly just by slightly moving the board down. Set a key right there. And it creates a key so that it doesn't mess around with the built-in animation and now when we get to this point right here it's the highest point where he's pushing down on the board there I'm going to rotate this board wow that's gonna be rough <laughs> rotate this board like that and maybe even move it down just a little bit maybe it's out this way or something I don't know oh no it's actually let me zoom in here just a little bit that might be about right yeah so and besides when we're looking at it from the angle we're going to be looking at it from, like, once again it's all about the smoke and mirrors guys so let's uh, undo that last little bit because I don't need that movement going on in there what I do need to do probably is rotate that uh, at that point this way as well so that it's actually kind of going like that there we go and then maybe like that and okay there we go and then when it comes down right we want to make sure that we rotate it back so let's see where the oh, that doesn't look too bad just like that that actually worked out pretty good yeah especially when it goes fast like the animation well that looks pretty pretty good actually so it goes back to where it was let's look at it from the top view that looks pretty natural perhaps you could rotate a little bit this way All right, so let's go back to camera view and see how that looks when we scrub through this. So it's going to be off screen in camera, coming on, jumping over that, comes back, and then he falls down. So at this very last part, we're going to have to do a, a piece where we're going to cut from this camera to a different camera, and uh, and we're going to unlink the board, okay, from the. Um, uh, so let's turn off auto key so I don't forget. Uh, I always want to remember to turn auto key off if you record stuff you don't want to record. Uh, and then when he falls down, the board will maybe bounce, stay behind a little bit, you know. And you know, he'll be okay. All right. I think that'll work out pretty well. So for the most part, we have this mostly done. You can see what I did with the board. Uh, unlinking it is just simply selecting the board and clicking on the unlink selection. And so let's go ahead and do this for this part here. 
In fact, I think the best thing to do here, because we're gonna, we don't want, we're gonna actually, we want a different camera. So I'm gonna get into perspective view again and find a different view, viewpoint for when the character is at about the point where he starts to fall. Right about, well, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the board comes off right about here. Okay, so a little bit past halfway in the animation. So the board's gonna fall off right about here and that would be a good place because the legs are going through it and stuff and all that other junk and everything. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this, okay? And I'm gonna do a save as, and I'm gonna call this, uh, let's see, let's call it something like, part two, okay? I'm gonna put another camera in there, say so save. This is a much better process than trying to deal with all these other things of trying to go, well, how about the timing with this stuff and everything? Well, all we have to do is just put another camera in there uh, for the perspective of him falling uh, to create a different angle and, uh, and so forth. And then, and then unlink the skateboard uh, and then animate the skateboard separate from the, you know, do some freeform animation, but it's only a skateboard and that one, I think that one will be able to do okay. So we'll say save. Okay, so now we have part two in here, okay? And so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to, from this perspective view, I'm gonna rotate around and try to get an interesting view here, uh, maybe a zoomed in view of our skateboarder when he, uh, when he falls or something. Let's see how we're doing here. Let's see what happens with the animation as he falls here. Move it up a bit. And I'm just going to record this part right here. So it's right about the skateboard will come off actually. So we'll do a cutaway from the other rendering that will go through to probably about this part right here. We'll do a cutaway and we'll see him fall and the skateboard will come bouncing away. So all we have to do right now is literally just, um, and I think I can make a camera from this and that will look okay. It'll be kind of a close up view. I'm gonna make sure that when he falls, we can actually see all of them. So perhaps, uh, perhaps a little bit more like that. All right. And zoom out just a little bit more. Got to get this right, and you know how we can create a camera for view. So I can pull that over this way. So yeah, right about right about here is where I want the skateboard to come off. Right about there, that's going to be perfect. Let's render that. See if there's a shadow in it that'll hide that that wheel going into the ground. Oh, in fact, I don't have my lights in here. You know what else I have to do? I have to import lights from another, another, um, sorry, import lights from another uh, file or merge lights. Let's go in here and merge lights. So let's go import, merge. And we're gonna get the lights from um, this file right here that I used uh, originally to create this landscape. Okay, so we'll do that, open that up, and I want to get the lighting. Okay, so backlight, uh, there it is, fill light and key light. Okay, there we go. And say, okay, and there we go. All right, now. That will help our scene a lot. So let's go in here and make sure that we don't have any other duplicate lighting in here. So I'm going to um, uh, unhide by name. Oh, those must be hidden already. So they're not, they're not hidden, they cancel. So I'm gonna zoom out just for a minute. Yeah, they're there, we're good.
All right, so let's see how this looks when we render it. It should look better than it did a little while ago because we didn't have a lightning in here before. For some reason, it takes a while for that hat to get rendered. See, that looks a whole lot better. Notice how the colors and the, everything are blending. I got a little bit of texture going on here. You can see that with the lighting now. And of course, I just took a photograph and did some Photoshop work and just added a, a paint dab filter to it to make it look less like a photograph and something that maybe goes with our cartoon character a little bit better. All right. So, unfortunately, we can't see it, but hopefully it'll go by so fast that it won't be that noticeable. There's so many tweaking, so much tweaking you do with animation, it takes hours and hours, so we're not going to get too picky about that right now. We can always tweak it. Okay, so we'll close that up. All right, good. So what we want to do here is right about, right about here, well, no matter what, I want to unlink. Uh, no, right about, yeah, right about uh, here, I want to unlink our board. I think that's, that'll make a good camera view. So let's go ahead and create a camera from view. So go to views, create camera from view. And now we have camera two in here as well. So I can go in here and choose camera one, or I can go in here and choose, choose camera two, which is our close up. All right. So let's uh, get him going. Got our skateboard selected. I'm going to unlink it so now it won't follow. Okay, but what I'm going to need to do here is I want to make sure that the you know when when the animation happens that that that, that uh, this uh, skateboard is not just simply floating there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little frame by frame animation with the skateboard, okay? And it's not linked to our to our character. So I'm going to go back to perspective view here zoom out a little bit, come around, and I'm just going to make sure that the skateboard follows that foot. Okay? And so as we and so I'm going to go turn on auto key again, get the skateboard. Uh, as the character like starting right about here, I want to move the skateboard back into position somewhat. Well, we really only see it when it gets to be about here. So I'm going to move the skateboard down. All right. In fact, I could probably just re remove all that animation, but that's okay. We'll leave it. And then rotate it a little bit. So it's still following the character's foot. Okay, so rotate it. Rotate it. Rotate it. There we go. Move it into position roughly. Rotate it. And rotate it around. Rotate it. Oops. Rotate it down. Go back to our camera two view so we can see how we're going to actually see it in um, in the view. That looks all right so far. Okay, and now we can go. Okay, so when it comes here, and that's where it falls off. And that will that'll look fairly natural. This is the only part that's kind of bothers me a little bit is that. Uh, that skateboard being kind of in the ground there a little bit, so I'm going to rotate it up a little bit like that, and maybe up on this axis a little bit. Rotate it that way. Maybe just move it up and rotate it. And then move it down just a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's not so good. 
because we're going to probably right about there is where we're going to and that'll, that'll be okay because that's about where we're going to start recording this this uh this part so it'll go like that and then he'll fall the skateboard now needs to do some clever stuff <laughs> it needs to bounce a little bit and it needs to you know flip over or something and land on its on its, on its face so let's go ahead and, and make that happen so this happens there like that so the momentum of the skateboard appears to be going upward so let's make it continue to go upward so up a little bit and then rotate a little bit and then move it forward a little bit more and then have it rotate some more boom a little farther and then kind of rotate like that and yet go up so boom okay and I just, see this is the tedious part this is what I mean by freeform animation you have to have the timing right things happen faster than you think especially when a skateboard is bouncing and stuff so I want to rotate it some more so this time it's going to flip all the way over actually I'm going to do that last part it really should have flipped all the way over right here right about there is where we want to flip it all over so I'm going to select these keys right here and delete selected keys all right so right about here is where we really want this thing to totally just flip right over I think okay so I'm, I'm making this up as I go guys so uh, this is part of the process <laughs> so it flips all the way see how natural that looks boom that looks that started to look okay and that it's going to need to go all the way around to the other part here and then maybe down like this to where it's going to cut into the ground and then bounce up in the air so we'll get our move tool and let it uh let it go up in the air here And then get our rotate tool. Move this forward just a little bit more. Rotate this this way. Boom. It's there. Oops. Go here. Get our move tool. And it bounces up, sort of. and continues to rotate let's make it go this way can I make it move down to here rotate that whoop undo that rotate and move down Rotate and move down. Oops, move this over. Move down, rotate. Move it over a little bit more. Move it 
down just a little bit. And rotate it a little bit also. Move it over just a little bit more. See, so it's just barely finished. It's going to be bounced out that much really fast. Move down. And rotate. And rotate this way. Rotate that way. And then move down. Maybe slide a little bit that way. Alright, let's see how that looks. Slide a little bit more than that, I think, don't you? So let's slide it over a little bit. Maybe this way a little bit. Stopped a little too abruptly. So I'll have to hear. We'll make it slide a little bit more. There we go. That's looking pretty natural. All right.